I've designed and built quite a large number of machines as well as space saving devices. In fact, I've got yet another project that I've been working on, which is effectively a dual workbench with a permanent work surface on the bottom. You can retract that guy down. Everything stays perpendicular to the floor. And then you have yet another work surface on top for gluing or whatever you want to do. But then I thought while this guy was at the prototype stage, this would be a good opportunity to show you how I think through these problems and come up with these designs. And you guys can also give me some feedback on this one. I ended up calling this the Dr. Farm method. Let me show you. The first thing you have to do is define the problem. So let me show you my problem first and then we'll actually define it in writing. What you're looking at is a space that's approximately six feet wide by about three or four feet deep. And the workbench you just saw a second ago was in this space very comfortably. It could slide left and right. And that bench has wheels that would allow me to roll it away as you can see. Now. I want to be able to increase my assembly space without increasing the footprint in the shop. And that's the challenge. Now, right now, some of you have already scrolled down. You've pictured in your mind solutions you've seen before, like benches that are on the wall and they flop down with legs and things like that. But before we go there, I want you to just freeze that for a moment. Don't type that comment just yet. Let's carefully define the problem and then see how that changes the solution you come up with. You got to start by being as specific as possible without constraining yourself to any particular solution. Uh, one of my favorite examples comes from one of the books that I'm going to put in the description. So be sure to check that. I've got some references there that I want you guys to check out. But one of those books gave an example of cutting grass and they said you could define the problem as I need to design a more efficient lawnmower. Or you could also say I need to shorten so many acres of grass in so many minutes. Uh, one definition is going to constrain you to one type of solution, while the other one is going to open up all kinds of possibilities to how you might approach the problem. The same thing you want to do with your design. Try not to think about the solution too early because that's going to force you into thinking about uh, the problem in a way that it fits the solution you've already come up with. The second thing you need to consider is any constraints that you have. For example, I've got space constraints. Uh, I need this thing to be movable, so I've got weight constraints, things like that. So you want to think about manufacturability. If you're going to be making it yourself, it needs to be something you can actually manufacture. That includes tolerances, materials being used. For me, it needs to be mostly woodworking in nature. Otherwise, it's going to significantly drive up the cost for me. So let me show you the list I came up with. All right, so my goal is to double my working surface without increasing my floor footprint. That's the goal. And here are the constraints that I have. Uh, number one, it's got to fit in the same space as the current workbench. Number two, I want it to cost less than $200 in materials and any other uh, purchase components that I may need to get. I'm not actually worried about labor. As far as I'm concerned, the labor price is unlimited. I love doing this, so I don't care how much time I spend doing it. Number three, it needs to be manufactured with woodworking tools, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, number four, the surface must be flat. Since I'm going to be using this surface as a reference for being square and flat for many of the things that I'm going to be making, I need the surface itself to be both square and flat. It needs to be durable enough to withstand typical woodworking, so it needs to be able to withstand hammering and things like that. Uh, number six, I need to have accessible edges because I'm primarily going to be using this for an assembly table, which means I'll be gluing and clamping things together on it. And number seven, it must be movable. I want everything in my shop to be able to either have retracting casters or permanent casters so that it can be moved around. Now that you know how I'll define the problem and I'll put those things on the screen for you, think about possible solutions you might come up with. I'll wait. Okay, I won't actually make you wait, but you can pause the video if you need to. There's one other constraint that I have. It's more of a mental constraint but it's worth mentioning, and that's the cool factor. I mean, it's gotta be interesting to me, right? I love all things mechanical, and if it doesn't have some kind of mechanical component to it, I'm not gonna be nearly as interested in it, and I might be more willing to lean towards a purchase solution. The next step in our Dr. Farm method is research. Absolutely, you got to do your homework. Don't just start, don't go straight to CAD and start making something. You gotta do your homework first. There's a very, very high probability that someone already has a solution 
to your problem. And if I could find a workbench that was within my $200 budget that I could purchase off the shelf, that's an option I at least want to consider. But research, 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 search the web, try not to just focus on things that fit within the mold that you're thinking about. I jumped right into my research and I spent quite a bit of time looking at space saving devices. For whatever reason, I felt like that was gonna be the, uh, the right topic to search for. And what do you know, I came across this bed desk combination and the thing that was most appealing to me was the linkage on the side. It's got the cool factor, right? At least for me. But what I liked about the linkage is adjusting that linkage would allow me to put that second workbench at whatever height I wanted. Using that linkage on the side would allow me to bring that second workbench up to exactly the same height as the first one. It was just about using the right length of the lever. And so my design was kicked off into full gear. Now that we've done our research, the last four steps occur just about simultaneously. You generally are interchanging them together. So the first letter is F and that stands for function. How does your machine actually solve the problem? What, how does it provide a solution? In my case, I'm using linkages, which will allow me to hide my temporary work surface and bring to the same height my working surface, my primary working surface. When I need access, everything here stays in place. I can lower it down and present a secondary surface for uh, items that just maybe need to sit and be glued up or whatever without disturbing the things underneath. Now, A is for appearance, or you might say geometry as well. It's probably a more appropriate term because I'm not just thinking about how it actually looks. I'm thinking about the shape of it. The shape is what determines how your device, uh, your machine is going to handle the stress that's put on it. Now, we're going to talk more about stress in the next video, but just briefly, I like to think about stress as water flowing through my structure. So I think about where the force is going to be applied and then how does that get all the way to the floor? In this case, I've got these triangular shaped uh, gussets here on the side, which is gonna help feed the stress down through the pins, and then that's gonna work its way through the legs and down uh, through the base of my structure here. The third letter is R for risk. Now, at this point, you don't wanna be too married to your design, even if you've already made a prototype. This is your chance to totally rip it apart. In fact, there's another R for you there. Rip apart your design, try to find every possible failure point that you can. In fact, I like to assume it actually has failed and then try to reverse diagnose the problem. So I will say, okay, this guy broke, what went wrong? And by forcing myself to answer that question, I think about all the possible weaknesses in the design. Before I got to this point, uh, I had several weaknesses that I evaluated and came up with some solutions. So I'll share a couple of those with you. Number one, I was concerned about the structure racking like this. And I decided to compensate for that by covering the bottom. Now this is not gonna be the final shape, but for the prototype, I just glued on a square piece in order to keep these legs from being able to rack in the front. Uh, another possible failure point is the wood around the pins. Uh, because they're gonna be subjected to the greatest amount of stress, those holes can wear out over time and possibly become uh, potential binding points or worse, the, the wood might fail completely and my structure fall apart. So I'm gonna use some kind of bushing or bearing there in order to have a hard surface to rub against and reduce the potential wear point there. One other risk I wanna mention is the amount of effort it takes to actually lift this guy. So uh, based on my 3D model, the top surface as it's designed now with one and a half inch thick top uh, sides and so on, it's gonna be approximately 60 pounds. And the one on the bottom, it's gonna be about 50 pounds. And this workbench uh, across here is a little over five feet wide. That of course doesn't include whatever items might be on this bottom surface that I intend to leave there for, you know, an extended period of time. I've got a couple of ideas about how I wanna approach this. It might be as simple as attaching a counterweight here in the back or some kind of spring mechanism to like a spring assist. So that is one concern that I have that I am working through and it's not shown here in this uh, scale model. Uh, there are a couple other things that I've also tried to mitigate, but you guys are welcome to uh, offer some suggestions if you see things that you think are potential failure points.
in this design. The last one is model. And in this case, I made both a 3D model in CAD as well as an actual three-dimensional prototype. And this is a critical step for me. In fact, all my projects uh, that have mechanical components like this, I will often make a prototype. So sometimes I make scale prototypes like this where it's one quarter scale, which is very intentional by the way, because that way I can make this top three eighths of an inch or about 10 millimeters. That was the smallest surface I felt I could put screws into the side of. So all of this I was thinking about as I was scaling this down even to make the prototype as realistic as possible. So anyway, uh, for example, this is three eighths of an inch, but in real life, it's one and a half inches in the full scale model. In fact, right behind me, I have a prototype. This is uh, an idea that I've been thinking about for a while. I decided, you know what, I'm really struggling with how it's gonna play out in my mind. So I went ahead and just made a prototype. It took me a weekend to make that. I made it out of scrap pieces of wood. It's actually functioning really great. So now I'm ready to push my design to the next level, remove the flaws that I find in this one and make a more permanent table saw fence. This is another prototype that I made. It's actually one of the first YouTube videos I ever published. So basically it had my little bench top bandsaw on one side and then the router on the other side. I actually made this prototype out of cardboard first. My lathe, which is over here to my left, just outside of your view, was another full scale prototype that I built and I actually made several different versions, but there's a whole series of videos on that. So if you're interested in that, you can click on the link and uh, see more about my shop made lathe. When I made this guy, I was very intentional to follow the same assembly process that I would when I make the full scale model. Because again, this is an opportunity to learn everything I can about my design before I spend too much money and make the full size, uh, the full size workbench. And I actually discovered several things. Number one, I left the pin out of my design. There's supposed to be a pin here to lock this guy at the top. And what do you know? It was in my head, but I never actually put it in the 3D model. Another mistake that I made is I glued this in the wrong spot. And this is a mistake that I think I would have actually made on a full scale model if I wasn't paying very close attention. So this pin, which is just a, a quarter inch bolt at this point, and it's actually a one inch bolt in real life. So again, scale true to size uh, from one inch to a quarter inch. But this surface is supposed to be flush with this. I wanted this whole surface to be flush and I didn't want these pins to stick out over the workbench. So this is glued at the wrong level. There should be a gap underneath so that there will be uh, cross members on the bottom of this surface here, providing more support. The last thing I wanna mention is that this was designed to be built with uh, dimensional lumber. So a lot of this is made out of uh, two by fours, two by sixes, two by eights, things like that. That's gonna lead to the easiest manufacturing process. Once I start thinking about how much stress is gonna be applied to different areas, then I might decide I can make it lighter by milling those guys down, or I need to beef some areas up by gluing more pieces together. But that gives you a good starting point. You say, okay, uh, is it worth the additional work to glue on more, or is it worth the weight savings to shave off more material in order to uh, make the design as efficient as you can? Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this particular design. Give me any feedback you want to give in the comments. Let me know what you think. And in the next video, hopefully we'll be building this guy. Thanks for watching. I just realized I didn't give you guys a very good look at the uh, table saw fence. So the idea is there's a, a quick locking pin there. It's very snug. It only takes about a quarter turn to go from completely loose to completely tight. This part is designed to tilt so that I don't have to lower the blade. I can just lift it up and tilt it over. And one more cool thing. If you look at this side, you'll see that there's a block of plastic that I have here. This is actually melted down hard hats, which are made of HDPE. One of you sent me a whole box full of hard hats 
And in thinking about what to do with it, I thought, man, it would be great if these guys were just used as sliders. And this actually works fantastic in this application. Hope you like that little bonus footage. Thanks for watching.